What's up? This is B Rock. This is J Pat. We're the Knox. And you're watching Ambi. Hey everyone, it's Alicia from Ambi, and I'd like to welcome you to our interview with the Knox. How are you? Hello, hey, Ambi. Good. 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 Just thanks for taking a, the time to have a chat today. Of course. Thanks for having us. Yeah, my pleasure. So you guys must be pretty pumped right now because come March, you're releasing your debut record, yeah. 55. Mm -hmm. How are you yeah. feeling about that? Great. Good. It's crazy. It's been a long time coming. You know, we've been making music since like 2009 Nine. together. And, uh, you know, we've we had like three albums <laughs> worth yeah. of music not so come like out. we went through another record deal. We had a whole other album basically that we scrapped and then made this one. And it ended up, I think it was like kind of one of those things where a bunch of things happen and it all happens for the right reason you know it's like a bunch of these kind of potholes and delays and red tape but now yeah. it feels like it all has kind of built up to the right moment so yeah every time something would happen something else would happen to like prove that we weren't ready to yeah. put it put the music so out I think so it's kind of like you know one of those um, <coughs> you know happy accidents that has taken so long and now the timing feels just right. yeah and it feels yeah. like the album is right i, mean, I think the so the album was cool but like it feels like we've just gotten better and we so. know what we want we kind of honed our sound and now we're ready to kind of make a statement of what we are and what our sound is well, the number 55 is clearly important to both of you yeah. Yeah. important enough to label the debut after yeah, Can yeah you tell for us sure a little bit about your studio in chinatown 55 um <laughs> yeah we so the address is 55 christie yep. street in chinatown and it's uh, actually the old bc boys studio yeah the building too. used to be owned by the bc boys which we didn't really? find out until after we moved into it yeah it was like they they owned the building they used to have their first rehearsal space and studio in there so it's got a lot of good history it uh and it's just kind of like where, you know, we, we started off as the Knox in our apartment and uh, eventually took out a loan and kind of built this studio and it started off, you know, we used to just rent it out to people and try to just pay rent. And now it kind of became this place where whether it's artists that we know that are in town, everyone comes through. It's kind of like a hub and uh, it's kind of a cool creative space. We have like a photographer that works out of there and like a PR girl and like it's like kind of just a cool collective and it's kind of like kind of shaped our whole thing. And it's like where it. it's like where things really started taking off for us. Like because when we were working out of, out of our apartment, we were like we're trying but not really succeeding as well. And, um, yeah, and once we got the know. studio, we like we got a manager too. And then that's when we started like getting better gigs and like making more con connections in the music industry. And like the Knox started like becoming the knots at, at the yeah, studio. Yeah, so, it felt so like that was kind like, of the beginning of it all. So we kind of. Oh, it today. You know, that's where we are every day, and that's like, you know, so 55 is. And we have an old studio space in the same building that got turned into a yoga studio. <laughs> and now, <laughs> we we're, now we're in the like basement. Years, so yeah. We've been there for a while, so yeah. We owe, we owe it to the studio. To Landlord lets us smoke that. weed. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have had some really cool people actually perform on the record from Walk the Moon to Ex Ambassador. So, yeah. how did you yeah. choose which friends or which artists were going to contribute to the debut? It all kind of happened organically. Like yeah. we were saying with, uh, like, uh, with Classic. Like how we were saying when we, with our albums that kind of got canned and it was like happy mistakes um with classic we had a whole album that was going to come out and the label kind of fell apart that we were on and then like immediately after that we were just in la writing and we made classic or yeah we were just yeah, yeah we, we were just, just in a, we, it just kind of came out of nowhere yeah being classic and then the same thing with all same that. with Wyclef yeah with Wyclef was through a mutual friend who like recommended us that we work with him and with Walk same the with Moon, Walk the Moon we, met, we knew those guys for a while and like we've been kind of trying to get in the studio and they yeah. and Ex Ambassadors it's all just like from the scene kind of whether it's New York and just kind of like the indie pop scene you know Neon Gold is a big yeah. is a big crew of ours yeah and, and everyone's kind of part of that family and it's like none of the none of the acts on the album were one of those acts where it was like forced or yeah got you this or like the a it wasn't like a and r you know it was i mean we definitely have a great a and r team and they helped with a couple things like cameron and alex newell and a couple things that yeah were, that, that we had to were. reach out for but most of it was really just like really organic through friends which is awesome which is why it's great that when we're touring all over like sometimes they'll come on stage and play with us and it like, makes them more likely to do that because of because of the way the song was made and wasn't just like yeah. manufactured even the carly ray jepson song we, we did a bootleg of her of her song all that and she found it like online and tweeted it and then we reached out to her because she liked our remix and that's how it all happened it wasn't even like you know it was like a totally organic thing yeah which is cool yeah well one thing i really dig about the record is it's really not like other electronic music out there there's some really great warm disco vibes it feels yeah. really mm -hmm. really retro you're pretty much trying to as you guys have said on your tour like bring the funk back yeah. yeah so are you mainly influenced by some older 70s disco tracks is that where a lot so, of that yeah. stems i mean from? i am yeah. we're, we're each influenced by like uh kind of different influences I, i'm more influenced by like funk and disco and like gospel and all these yeah and i come from more you know like classic rock but also uh a lot of like 
I grew up listening to a lot of like Fatboy Slim and Chemical Brothers and kind of the UK dance stuff in the cool. 90s, which is you can hear a lot of that in there too, you know, the sample based stuff and kind of almost like hip hop influenced dance music. Yeah, we music. both listen to hip hop really. Yeah, so there's a lot really, of like, you know, yeah. there's like samples and stuff like that, which is cool. And it just feels like dance music, there's so much good dance music right now, but a lot of it feels so serious. Yes. Like everyone, like, you know, like from the disclosures and all that's so good, but it's like a lot of, you know, there's just like a, a gap right now for that to bring back that like kind of just like fun poppy dance music but that's not just made for top 40 you know it's and like, it's also not the like edm yeah, super it hard soul to and it still has kind of groove but it's not a lot of this like kind of new soulful house stuff is very serious every song is like a really strong soul vocal like talking about something really ethereal and which is cool and i love that stuff but it's just like i feel like there's a, a we're not right that serious for, i'm not that serious just making fun <laughs> fun music you know we were, we're real someone said to us last night um at our montreal show that they've seen a bunch of different acts there from ranging from like hip hop to dance music and they were like you guys kind of embody like all those acts and we were like oh it's cool because yeah, that's kind of what we want to do they've seen a bunch so. of shows there all those different genres and we were like all of them combined which is kind of what we're going for so that's cool i can totally yeah. hear like the chemical brothers and fat boy slim yeah. vibes in there too totally now i'm not gonna get funk soul brother in my head too. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best song well just from remixing a song of hers actually having um i wish my taylor swift yeah. on the records obviously you guys have a little thing going from Miss <laughs> taylor swift. can you just tell us about where this passion began <laughs> it's just it's kind of just like uh. that song kind of came just because matt Comer wrote it and like at first when he he hit us up like yo i got this crazy song to the track that's like about taylor swift and at first we we're like Ooh. Mm, like that's you know yeah kind of and she like, had done that whole new york whole thing and like we're from yeah. new york and, and i was like ah taylor swift yeah like we're, we're not def we're definitely not like taylor groupies but then we heard the song and we we're like oh man this is maybe we are taylor groupies. yeah maybe we don't even i don't know i mean i definitely <laughs> went to the concert in 1989 to world tour but she's cool she's she, cool uh, but she definitely has she definitely it's like that song is really a metaphor for just like you know living the dream and like being a strong person and, and then going for a girl like that that's kind of a boss and, and living in Hollywood. It's like kind of a whole. It's just like reaching for, your goals yeah, and like for achieving like your dreams. And your she definitely achievements. is a good role model, I think, for girls. At some point, at some things, definitely, she's good. Some things she can She's all right. She's cool. But I don't mind. It. To, I respect as her as songwriting. She's a musician. I think she's pretty awesome. She's a, she's a great songwriter and yeah. she's a great pop artist for sure. Have you had the chance to meet her yet? No, uh, no. I mean, not. she's yeah, not like my there. cup of tea, but <laughs> I can see why she's so successful for sure we well, are now hitting the road in support of 55 yep how are these shows treating you guys you enjoying it yeah it's been yeah. incredible we've sold out like majority of the shows which is i think we're four for five yeah um and it's just crazy it's like it's i mean we don't the album's not even out yet so it's like yeah. once the album comes out hopefully you know the tours will the shows will be twice as big too and uh it's just cool to do your own headline show. We have our own tour bus for the first time. Yeah, tour bus like is fire. It's been a long time, so it uh, it feels good. We're known for actually getting fans to create their own after parties <laughs> to follow your shows. What's what's one of the more memorable ones that, that stick out to you that you've DJed at Probably after? Probably the Boulder one. The one <laughs> oh, yeah, I was going to say that. Like, it, like, it was like a sorority house. <laughs> it was crazy. And then we started outside, and the, and the cops yeah, so came and shut it down. started outside, and the cops came, so they moved the turntables inside, like, the kitchen of this, like, tiny sorority. It was so insane. And literally, by the end of the night, the floor was caved in like this. <laughs> yeah, there, there was, was a like, a puddle of, of like, sweat of, like, and, like, water I think beer, puke. It was, like, it was, like, this deep because the it's caved so much and I, I feel wow. like they had to repair the floor. And kids were just walking around I thought puking. the floor was going to collapse. And the crazy. reason why the party like stopped. Maybe 100 degrees in there. Yeah, the reason why the party stopped is because oh, the, fire uh, the fire alarm, alarm went off. Jeez. and Just from, just just from, from the body heat. Body it was so heat. hot that the sensors <laughs> And we went outside and you could just see like steam yeah, just billowing like from every you know, window. Like it was crazy. I was like, oh that my god. That must feel amazing that you can actually create that atmosphere yeah, from people wanting to see you guys. It was way too hot. It was way too hot. But it was fire. It was so hot. That's probably the craziest one, though. Well, I came across this tweet of yours that I absolutely loved, which was 2016, the year of no more bay and no more lit. Please. <laughs> <laughs> For me, I despise those words. Oh, so I was yeah. I, can I, can't. I don't really so say much. bay, but I'll say lit every now and then. It's been like, yeah, what, two basically. years yeah. now? You think it's a fat? I mean, I think it's slowly, but lit has got to go. Got to go. Which People other lingo or words really rub you the wrong way? Like for me, if I hear dad bod or mom anywhere, I'm like, oh god. Yeah, that the mom and the mom charity. and dad thing Man weirds bun. me out when it's like, yes, mom, yeah, you're, like, yeah, dad, like talking about a s artist they like. Like, why would you call them dad? I don't like I don't like man bun and beard culture. They're not like <laughs> they're not like it's not lingo, <laughs> but it's too. it's just like vernacular <laughs> suggesting you like a culture. You know what I mean? I don't like I don't really 
I don't get yeah, down with that. Yeah, the it's thing just really has got to go. It just can't anymore. It just makes me... Now it's, it's almost crazy. ironic when people say, like, oh, come through, it's lit, but it's, like, not lit. They'll say it. <laughs> I don't know. It's, like... Every time I say even if I try to say it ironically, I still feel <laughs> awful. Yeah? Yeah. Even I don't really say it. fun of it, asking the question, just, like, when I say the word bay or something, yeah. it really rubs <laughs> me the wrong way. I ne- bay was never a big thing of yeah. mine. Also, swag, people still yeah, say, I, like I think. I don't know. Yeah. that That's probably got to go. I think Spike's gonna stay around for a while. I'm glad Yolo's finally like gone. I, I just saw someone. I just saw someone put up a Facebook post and it was just Yolo today. But I think it was. I don't know. They were With trying no to be context. funny. No, no literally no gonna context. That's going to be like vintage. It's going to be like it's throwback. It's so crazy. Yeah. I was reading an interview, and it's really cool to see how involved you guys are with technology and just kind of staying up with everything going on. And I was also checking that whole piece out, and it said how you have a lot of apps on both of your phones. <laughs> well, I just got a new, bigger phone so I can have more apps. But for nice a phone. while, I was out of space. I have on. so many apps. I really do a lot of, like, I like to call myself an iPhone artist. And I do, I have like seven different, like, graphic design weird things where I can just put people's heads on things and do things like that, which is really fun. And like, yeah, I just like, I like the, I like to photo, like do Photoshop on my phone and stuff like that. And I also, I don't really play games phone. though. I it's play lots really of my games. Thing. Yeah, I don't play phone games. Really. What's your favorite app on your phone? Probably this one called Juxtaposer, where you can just like layer images on top of each other. Instagram. It's really chill. No. <laughs> Instagram. Uh, I have this game. The iMessage app. I have this game. Uh, oh my God, what's it called? It's called like, dis- like disease or something like that but you like try yeah. to like build you try to like so build hard. a disease to kill the world you're literally trying to destroy the world disease. It's like yeah i just everyone in rush is dead <laughs> what it's just announced on the tour and, like the yeah. faster you do it like the more points you get but then like there's like it takes me like hours to do it but then there, you like it's go to the like leaderboard and there's people that do it in, in like minutes i'm like how do you even do it? i don't know it's really it's really hard it's hard you're game. working your way up those leaderboards though <laughs> it's like a men- it's like a mental all exercise this be, all this time could be spent making music on our laptops but we don't mm. <laughs> in that same piece you're actually talking about how you're pretty big nerds from the technology to anime to video games mm-hmm. so for yourselves if you were to coin the nerdiest thing about one another what would you say that is about each other yes ben wears pokemon socks <laughs> <laughs> got me <laughs> um i mean nerdy in a different way that jpat will sit for like hours and just watch recaps of basketball like basketball things like, like the 90s highlights guys. yeah it'll just be like highlights for, I mean it's like nerdy in a sporty nerdy and like way. cry that T-Mac never made it you know but also Dragon Ball Z he like knows every character's name and their different like ways they evolve yeah that's true so that's pretty nerdy DBZ is nerdy yeah super yeah. nerdy yeah I play Pokemon on my DS all the time <laughs> DS oh my gosh yeah. <laughs> I have like four of the different generations yeah, that came yeah, out crazy, like the yeah. big bulky silver ones I've lost like three and I keep buying yeah we one. each have like four DS's <laughs> Let's well, wrap everything up today for your fans who are going to be viewing. Mm-hmm. Anything you want to say or shout out to them all? Go pre-order our album. 55. 55 March 4th. It's on iTunes now. And uh, if you get it, you get Kiss the Sky, I Wish, Classic, and another song that I don't remember. <laughs> Carly Rae. <laughs> no, no, no. And then we have more songs coming out soon. The next one is the Carly Rae song. Coming Listen out to all of our music. Yeah. And come to that shows. we put out. And we love come you. Come to our shows. Shout out. We love you. <laughs> Thank you so much for your Thank time you. today, guys. Very really nice appreciate problem. it. Thank you. And to remember, everyone viewing can visit us at amusicblogger.com for exclusive interviews, features, videos, and so much more. We will see you next time. Andy.